A while back, I picked up one of these Jet 9 by 20 lathes off of Craigslist. This is one of those Chinese-made lathes that's sold under a dozen different brand names. Grizzly sells one, Enco, Harbor Freight, Pomida, MSC, all kinds of different companies sell the same exact lathe. And uh, the one that I got needed some cleaning up and some repair. And uh, as I started looking around the web for information on it, I started finding a bunch of different YouTube videos on repair and upgrades on these. One of the interesting videos that I found is a guy had changed this AC motor to a three-quarter horsepower sewing machine motor. It's a DC servo motor, much smaller in size, and it had variable speed and a lot more torque. That got me looking around a bit more, and I started finding that these sewing machine motors came in uh, brushed DC type and AC servo motors, and the AC ones were even smaller yet. I knew I wanted manual speed control and most of the AC servo motors had a digital uh, up-down speed control. You had to monkey around with a bunch of goofy digital settings to get it to reverse directions and that kind of thing. After a bunch of research I found a company called uh, Yuma that makes the same AC motor with a manual speed control and a manual reverse switch. And I thought that'd be ideal for an upgrade for my lathe. So, I went on eBay and I bought one, and I thought I'd do an unboxing video of it. We'll take a look at this and see if it really is what it's supposed to be. So first we'll take a look. Um, this is, says it's a family electronic servo motor made in China, so it'll fit right along with the lathe. 550 watts, 0 to 3450 RPM. The whole thing is pretty small, so let's uh, crack her open here and take a look. Oh, nice. <laughs> a wildlife appointment calendar. Oh, I should say that first, um, uh, yes, uh, I bought this from, uh, I don't know if you can read that there, but that's in focus. Let's see here. I bought this from Zamir Sewing Machines uh, through eBay. You can see their address there. They sell on eBay. This, this motor, this version was slightly more expensive than the others. This one was $134, where you can find these uh, for around $100, $120 bucks like that online. But uh, this one was a little bit more expensive. But I wanted this one because it had the manual speed control. And because these are made for sewing machine motors, they come with brackets for the foot pedal and that kind of thing which we're not going to use for the lathe application. And look at that, it, it is the model that I wanted. Let's see if we can spin this around here. This is supposed to be speed, and then this is supposed to be the direction, so that uh, you can, for a lathe, that'd be ideal. I think that's going to really work out quite nicely. The control feels a little loose, at the extreme ends. So let's uh, pull her out of here. And the whole thing is very lightweight. It only weighs like 12 pounds. I can easily pick it up with one hand. Just for a size comparison, uh, this is a coffee mug here and you can see that that motor is not much bigger than a coffee mug. And that's three quarter of a horsepower, three quarter horsepower out of this small of a motor here. So here we have a manual switch. This will be nice. We can mount this on the front of the lathe. Oh, and it does have a, a standard US plug. I was kind of worried about that. Undo the cords here so we can plug it in. So for my application, I'm going to actually take this uh, speed control box off of the top and uh, remount it. These have got a lever here on the side that controls speed. So this, if this works the way that the other videos that I've seen work, this will set what your maximum RPM range is and then this will control zero to whatever that range is that you set here. Uh, we're going to have to change that pulley out to mount on the jet. Nice and small. All right, well, let me get this plugged in, and we'll be right back.
Okay, so we have the power plugged in, and the first thing I notice is that the supplied power cord really does not fit in that outlet very well. It was a really tight fit in there. We flip around there, and then this is our speed control. And then this does set our maximum speed, so... Set this down low. Let's see if I can do this without bumping the camera here. Oh yeah, she's got a lot of torque down low, which will be nice for slow speed uh, milling applications, lathe applications. Reverse this direction here. Really nice motor, quite very quiet. Really excited about that. That's going to be a really nice addition to that lathe. Next up, we're going to crack the top and take a peek inside. Okay, so off camera, I took off the screws in here to get this uh, heat sink off so we could take a look inside here. Uh, I wanted to kind of take a peek first to know what we were getting into before I um, did this on camera. And it's kind of hard to work uh, standing over this camera and tripod here. So, we pulled up this heat sink here. Kind of a rat's nest of wires in here. There's a ground wire that's loose over here. First thing I noticed that there was a lot of cobwebs of uh, hot melt glue all over the place in here from all these connectors that they glued down. Let's we'll zoom in here. See if we can zoom in here and take a good look at the circuit board. Sorry, my camera skills are not so great. This is a new camera and I'm not really used to it. So, here we have the, the brains of the operation here. Some big capacitors in here. And uh, there's a fuse internal here. Build quality is not good. It's not bad. I've never heard of this brand of capacitors here. Relay inside, bridge rectifier, incoming AC. Various connections. And uh, if we look in the box here, let me see if I can zoom you in on that there. We have a potentiometer for speed control. Here's the direction. And then over here, it's kind of hard to see down inside of there. But this is actually a magnet. And there is a Hall effect sensor down there. And as you pull up on this lever, it starts to pull this magnet away from that Hall effect sensor. And that's how you control the speed of the unit. Uh, I want to take this controller off of the side here and I'm going to mount this on the front of my lathe with a detent so you can pull it up and it'll lock into place and you can push down or if you just bump it it'll kind of kick down and kick the speed off uh, like some of the larger lathes have and then I will remount this speed control and this direction switch into another location uh, I might be able to stick them right here next to this power switch and then mount this on the side of the lathe, something like that. We'll have to take a look at what we can do there. But, quite interesting. I'm going to have to get in here and study the circuit a little bit more. See what they're actually doing in here. But, uh, seems to work quite nice. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that uh, the screws that go through this heat sink go into this plastic case here. And they were all loose and they're, the holes are almost stripped out. Uh, so they were going to fall out of there before no time, so I will come up with a better box or better arrangement for this uh, power supply unit. So looking at the board a bit more, we can see that there's six transistors here arranged in uh, banks of three. That must be for this H bridge here. And I don't know if you can see it, but right here on the board, I don't know that I can get that focused, but it says Ascend written on the board right there. Don't know if that's... Uh, 
any information on who made it. You can see it was made in 2016 here. It has a D79F9211 processor in here. 5 volt regulator. This uh, empty plug here is labeled for display. On some of the other AC models there is a uh, two digit numeric uh, display that displays various codes and directions and things like that. So they must use this board for more than one thing. If I can arrange this here, but um, so you can see it. But the this uh, plug here, which is the um, that is the Hall Effect sensor. Uh, there's a, two extra pins that are over here too, uh, which must be used for other functions. They must use this same board for multiple different devices. One other thing I wanted to point out is, so the motor here, the main power feed for the motor are these three wires. And then there are four wires over here that must be for an encoder, uh, something like that, so it knows how fast the motor's going. So it looks like a total of seven wires there for the motor. So overall, I have to say I'm pretty happy with my purchase of this Yuma, three-quarter horsepower, 550 watt, sewing machine motor, AC servo motor. This I think is going to make a really nice addition to the jet lathe or Enco lathe or grizzly lathe, uh, whatever you have there. Seems to have quite a bit of power despite various build quality issues and whatnot. It looks like it's uh, no different than your Chinese kit lathe. But uh, I think if we get rid of this box on the top here and this stand and make a new mount for this nice little motor, this is going to be a really nice addition and uh, I think a worthwhile upgrade for anybody who has one of the Asian made 9x20 lathes. So check them out. Zamir Sew on uh, Zamir Sewing Machines on eBay. Uh, I'll put a link for their, um, their eBay page on there. $134. Nice little unit.